This picture is, is essentially for Americans, people who call themselves Americans. It's about those in the South today who are trying to make democracy live. It begins with the painful and heartfelt assumption that we are not an island of perfection, but in fact a land of imperfection in an imperfect world. Negroes are trying to register, to vote, and help to change situation that they're existing under today help to bring about democracy in our land today. Mississippi, 1963. Free for a moment in this hillside home, they are secluded from the white segregationists who carry guns and clubs. I miss, I've been living in a mid county 52 or three years. I've participated in everything that the county saw fit for a citizen to participate in. And also, I raised my family here in the mid county. Nine little children. I only have two kids now going to school here in the mid county. I also was a president of the NAACP here in the mid county. And I would, I do think that every citizen in the mid county should participate in an election. And I hope and trust that I will have the privilege to vote once or twice in my life. I'm Mrs. Fannie Lou Hamer, and I farmed on the Marlowe Plantation for 18 years. I had charge of keeping up with the time and paying off. And I went down the 31st of August to try to register. And after I had gotten back home, Mr. Marlowe told me that I would have to go down and withdraw my registration or leave because they wasn't ready for that in Mississippi. And I said, Mr. Marlowe, I'm trying to register for myself. So I had to leave that same night after I had gone down in August. And then I spent one night with Mrs. Tucker and after the, about two days in September, they shot in the house 15 times, thinking that I was there. Resistance to change in the South is great. And behind the headline, there's a story of intimidation that is seldom told. The police dogs, the police brutality, the use of fire hose and, and other forms of intimidation to turn Negroes back is what hits the headlines daily. But there's a story is yet to be told. Turn me around, they gonna let it go, burn it. Turn me around, keep on a walking, keep on a talking, marching up the freedom land. Ain't gonna let no injunction. Turn me around, my Lord, turn me around, my Lord, turn me around, they gonna let no injunction. Turn me around, keep on a walking, keep on a talking, marching up the freedom lane. Mrs. McGee tries to make a living on a farm for herself and four teenage children. They sent me to the hospital. They put my lane in the soil bank. They got $1,095. They rented the other lane for $375. They put my children on welfare. When I came out of the hospital, they had taken my fence down and widened the road down through my place. They had went around and got all of my creditors, different people that I owed to trust me, and they hadn't paid anybody. I got a lawyer to straighten my business out, and he told me that he would. Well, he didn't do anything about it. He worried me about selling some of the land. I told him that I didn't want to sell the land, that I wanted to furnish so that I could farm and make a living for my children. And so they just put pressure on me. They cut the welfare check 
to $20 a month, then they cut it to $17 a month. They worried me so that I had a nervous breakdown in 60. I had to go back to the hospital. So when I came back, I came back home, I still tried to get a punish. He collected all the money, rent on the place. He didn't pay the federal land bank, the notes that I owed. They put pressure on me trying to get me to sell the land I refused. So last year, I rented a portion of the land for $200 cash. He got that $200. He didn't give us any of it. I went down to Illinois to Reddish and vote. I got down and made my revival back. My landlord said unto me, if you don't go down and take your name off the registration to move. I took his word and I moved to Drew, Mississippi. Couldn't set too much pressure to be on the landlord there. Had me to move on to Cleveland, Mississippi. After arriving to Cleveland, Mississippi, my wife, she had to go to the hospital from down to Jackson. It's there on the same generation. And I didn't know what step to take. I'm still working. Nine girls here. I'm working, trying to take care of them, to the best of my knowledge. This is Mrs. Mildred Ellings. She's 32 years of age. She's lived on Mr. W.D. Fields' plantation for 11 years. She's the mother of eight children. Her children do not attend school regularly because of food, clothing, and money. Last year, Mrs. Evans made 11 bales of cotton. At the end of the year, she only received $123. I am 17 years old. I pick 300 pounds of cotton a day. I am 9 years old. I help my mother pick cotton. I pick 100 by day. I am 14 years old. I help my mother pick cotton. I can pick about 200 a day. This is Mrs. P. Williams, the great-grandmother of the five children here. She receives a small social security check each month, and from this she must help support the children so their mothers earn and take care of them. The reason I do, because my mother worked a crop and I had to help her, and so I quit school so that I could help her. sitting on the chair and they were sitting. the girl was badly shot up and they had to be rushed to the hospital and and they suffered very much we went over to see them and they were very much in pain they had to be rushed to another hospital in Jackson and one had to go and this is the results after I had uh, registered my name is Bob I was working in Ruleville Mississippi on the night of the shootings 1762 I went to the hospital to check on the condition of the two girls who had been shot and was arrested shortly after my arrival there by the mayor of the town of Ruleville. I spent the night in jail talking to the mosquitoes with no charges preferred against me. The night the shot was made in my house, there was no one there but me and my wife. We have hung out. six months, last six months employment conversation. My name is Eddie Nunnery, a native of a mid county and live in the state of Mississippi. I've gone to try to reddish at this register office and after going there several times they failed me and told me I was disqualified to register. And after going there once it was a gun fight. 
Lots of people in uh, Mid-County are afraid to go to Liberty and register or vote because they are afraid of being killed. Lots of them are afraid to join the NAACP because they'd be afraid to lose their job and have to go hungry. I'm Willie Peacock, a field secretary for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. At present, I'm working in Greenwood, Mississippi, in Lower Fulton County, on voter registration. Our present activities are the distribution of the food, which has been sent from the north uh, as an emergency relief. Uh, we feel that this, uh, this particular food will, will serve the needs of the needy to the greatest advantage. I think that, the, that they are very appreciative of this, and I think that they have care and are concerned about them. Mississippi several times to try to register to vote. The second time I went down to register, which was filling out the form, a gun for it. When the gun for it, I went out to see what was happening. My son remained on in filling out. When I come back, we left my son, when we left out, my son say, uh, Mr. White Man come across the hall and told Mr. Fulton, uh, someone body got the hell shot out of him, and he said he sure did. And the last time we went out, filled out a farm, we complete our farms. They asked him how did we come out. He said we had to come back in several days. They was going to run a publication. Several days was up, we went back in. He said we had several more days. And when several more days was up, we went back down to see how we come out. And he got his chair and pulled it to the desk, and we all sat down. He went over the application just like some passed and some didn't, and got to the end of them. None of us didn't pass, and so I asked him, what did I fail on, my application or my section or duty of assistance? And he replied, all of us. My name is Mabel Lee Wesley. I live in Liberty, Mississippi. I was one of the first ones to go to Liberty to register to vote. And wasn't anything said that day because the officers were very surprised. Then later I carried some more people and they did not finish because they began to beat Brit Travis and they got scared and ran out. Well, if you won't go, don't you hinder me. children go well if you won't go let your children go 
Well, if you won't go, let him kiss and go. I thought my way, way And the young people, there is hope. Many of them have dropped out of school for a year or more to work as field secretaries for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, going into the rural areas of the South to register people, to teach the people how to register and vote and to use the franchise as, as an effective means of change. They exist on 10 and $15 a week, living with the people, working with the people, trying to build new horizons for tomorrow. I, as a young Negro of Mississippi, feel that uh, he is not wanted because due to the fact the uh, white people of the South, they don't seem to understand the younger generation of uh, Negroes. Uh, we want to uh, put up with the uh, present uh, situation. Uh, it makes uh, any Negro uh, who is sensible uh, kind of angry when he hears uh, any uh, person ask a Negro, why do you want to do this, do that? Why do you want to vote? Why do you want to go to uh, the University of Mississippi? Well, uh, I think that the uh, Negro should uh, be able to chooses his own uh, institution as the uh, white uh, youth when he finishes high school. I think that the Negroes should be treated just like the white. I think when I will finish high school, that I will try to enter the College of Ole Miss as if James murdered. My name is Emma Bell. I'm from Macomb, Mississippi. I'm 19 years of age. I'm a field secretary for the Student of Violence Co Coordinating Committee. I'm working, for vote, I'm working on voter education program in Greenville, Mississippi. I feel that the Negroes in the South, especially the younger ones, would like to have the same opportunities and privileges that any other American citizen would have. And living within the system of segregation, they are aware that this cannot ever exist. Therefore, they are willing to work and fight much harder to do, a, to, to do away with segregation. Uh, the reason why I'm in the movement in the South is because I think that things have gotten to the point where people have to do things for themselves. They've got to stop depending on the, the federal government or the state governments or even their local governments to secure their rights for them. They've got to act to win the rights that the Constitution guarantees them people must make up their minds that if they want to be free and if they want others to be free then they've got to do something uh, something beyond just giving money or just casting a vote or just uh, wishing others well but they've got to uh, put their bodies in the movement as we say they've got to get out on the front lines and they've got to do something for themselves and for other people my name is james jones i'm 20 years old i was arrested in jackson mississippi for participating in the freedom ride i was I started with Bridget Peace and sent to Parsons Penitentiary. While, while being there two weeks, we heard the girls singing on the other side. So we asked one of the trusted what was wrong. He told us that the, the guards had taken the girls' mattress. So we decided that we would protest that same night. We all started singing. The sheds came down and put us in solitary. Solitary is about six feet wide, seven feet tall. He put 27 of us in solitary, and that night, one of the fellows panicked. Another guy fainted, and so we decided that we would cool down and, and ask the guard and ask the sheriff to let us out. So he let us out, and now that I'm out of Parson Penitentiary, I'm now working on voter registration in Sunflower County. Parson is located in Sunflower County. Fire 
was home for Rosmer and Ed. Which side are you on, boy? Which side are you on, my lord? Which side are you on, boy? Which side are you on? Don't listen to Mr. Charlie. Don't listen to his lies. A colorful tavern got a chance unless we organize. Boy, which side are you on, boy? Which side are you on? basic right to vote in our country, there is seemingly an endless chain of violence. You uh, are delivered to Mississippi to register. The uh, registrar gave me some paper to fill out. I've done the very best I could, and I turned them in. After I turned them in, I left, and as I was leaving, a group of white men was interfering with some of my friends, and I got them in my truck and got them the way as quick as I could. My name is Curtis Dawson. I was born and raised in a mid-county. I was in Liberty, Mississippi on the way to the courthouse for to register the vote. Me and Knox and Moses, we met three white men. And one of those men jumped on Moses and began to beat him. Herbert Lee was the father of some nine children in a mid-county Mississippi. The county is 54% Negro. He tried very hard to get his fellow citizens out to register and vote. He was killed by a state representative from Mississippi, a white state representative, after he himself had tried to vote. These are pictures of his wife and his nine children. No. director of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee's Voter Registration Project in Mississippi, Robert Moses. The young people working with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC as we call it, are characterized by restless energy, radical change in race relations in the United States. The world is upset, and they feel that if they are ever going to get it straight, they must upset it more. My name is Charles McLaurin. And I worked in voter registration in Sunflower County. On January 25th, 1963, I went to the mayor's office in Indianola, Mississippi. My purpose, the purpose was to see if there were any laws on the book that forbidden voter registration activities in the city. The mayor jumped from his seat and said, you black son of a bitch, don't you come in here arguing at me. I told him that we were there to do voter registration and that if there were any laws that forbid it to let me know. And he said, he, he said no. I turned to walk away and he called me back, said, go out and teach everybody in the town. I don't care. But if you go into any churches, I will cut off the tax exemption. My name is Jesse Harry, and I participate in voter registration in the Mississippi Delta. It was during 1962, I was arrested in Jackson for contempt of court and fined one hall of fine and 30 days in Hines County Farm. The first time I was beaten was in Hines County on the elevator when officers asked me my name and where I was from, and I told him I was from Jackson. And so he beat me and he hit me side the head in the back and thing. The second time I was beaten on the Hines County Farm, because he, he asked me where was I was from also, and I told him Jackson, and he said, are oh, you one of those freedom riders? 
And I told him I didn't know where it was, so he beat me. And the third time I was beaten was on the counter phone because uh, I refused to move a 200-pound log. And the fourth time I was beaten because... My name is Hollis Watkins. I participated in a demonstration in Macomb, Mississippi, and was arrested for breach of peace along with 115 other students while a mob waited on the outside. After being questioned, I was carried into a room where a police officer came in and got a rope and said, okay, nigga, get up from here and let's go. We're going to have a hanging here tonight and you're going to be first. I looked at the officer as he looked at me and then he walked out. I'm Samuel Block, field secretary for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. I've been working in Greenwood, Mississippi the Florida County. My purpose of being in Greenwood is to teach the Negroes their duties and obligations and responsibilities of citizenship under a constitutional form of government. And by doing this, I teach how important ballot is and voter registration. When I, my first trip to the courthouse, I carried eight people up to register. I was met by the sheriff. He asked me where was I from. I told him I was a native Mississippian. He said, yes, 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 I know that, but where are you from? I told him I was a native Mississippian, around in here someplace. He said, well, what county? I said, well, around here, some of these counties. Well, he got angry. He spit it in my face, and he walked away. He turned around and came back. And he put his finger in my face. He said, look, he said, I know every nigger and his mammy around here. I asked him, did he know any color people? He looked at me, and he spit, uh, walked away again, and he came back. He said, look, he said, I don't want to see you around in here no, no more in this county. He said, I want you to leave town, pack your bag, and leave town right now. Get out of town. Don't let me catch you around here no more. So I wasn't frightened. I looked at him. I told him, well, Sheriff, if you don't want to see me around here in town no more, the best thing for you to do Pack your bags and leave, because I'll be here. I knew that I wasn't leaving. Today in 1963, the fight to enjoy the rights of first-class citizenship is still being waged in this country. The needs of the people on the front line are great. We need typewriters, papers, money for food, and anything that you can find that is useful. You can find anything that is useful. It can be sent to the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, 6 Raymond Street, Atlanta, Georgia. Help us who have fought for so many years to make the world safe for democracy. And I fight now to make democracy safe for the world. No.